order, order. We now come to the next debate, Building Schools for the Future in Stoke-on-Trent South. Mr Robert Flello. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs Anderson. It's a great pleasure to see you in the chair today. I've asked Mr Speaker for this debate amid great sadness. It is indeed a great tragedy that this debate is necessary, a £250 million tragedy, to be precise. When I stood up in Parliament on the 24th of November 2005, and asked the then Parliamentary Undersecretary for Schools about this huge investment in Stoke-on-Trent's education, honourable members on the government's benches turned in amazement that so much money was being made available to my city. The looks of jealousy were all around me, but now we're in a sorry state where Stoke-on-Trent Council, Serco and sadly even DCSF have turned this good news into a disaster. Why? Because the Council think they know best and don't trust residents to have a genuine say in how BSF funds are used. I asked in that question three long years ago that the Council engage with local people in spending BSF money. Those three years have passed with lamentably absent engagement, as I will illustrate in the time I have available this afternoon. We then had three or more full starts with laughable activity, such as the Council issuing draft plans only to quickly withdraw them and pretend nothing had ever been issued. But in July of last year, the City's Members of Parliament discovered, by chance, that the Council had briefed the local media that they were intending to close all 17 high schools in Stoke-on-Trent, as well as, almost as an afterthought, the special schools too. I found out, Mrs Anson, about schools in Stoke South closing in the library corridor of this place during a chance conversation. The Council at that point said it would open just 12 new high schools with a reduced number of co-located special schools. Following speedy intervention, we managed to buy time over the summer of last year for the Council to engage in proper dialogue with not only the residents of the city, but with specialists and educationalists, health professionals, indeed all those with a stake in the future of our great city. Yet despite this we had a summer of inactivity, with a token event on the 12th of October last year, which was nothing more than a sham. A gathering of interested stakeholders, to some extent, but by no means all. We witnessed a presentation which ironically said how important it is to engage with all stakeholders, but then gave no opportunity to listen to the views of those gathered, <coughs> Excuse me, or indeed those not invited. Mrs Anderson, I won't detain those present with a blow-by-blow -blow account, but suffice it to say that at every turn I and fellow members of Parliament were told one thing and the Council did another. We were told discussions would take place at the start of this year with head teachers, but then found out those meetings were held without our input and the head teachers were told what was happening to them. No dialogue took place. As a result, in Stoke South we currently have five non-faith schools which will fall to just two if these harebrained plans go ahead. But let's look at what is planned for my constituents. Currently, the Council, aided and abetted by their henchmen from Serco, and I'll turn my attention to that lot in a moment, plan to close Ensa, Longton and Trentham High Schools. Blurton High is to be result. It's, it, <coughs> excuse me. Blurton High is to be rebuilt, which is a, a good news. Sandon High has already been rebuilt, and at my invitation it was formally opened last week by Lord Mandelson. That school is to be extended to take even more pupils. A new school outside of my constituency, indeed in the constituency of my honourable friend here, uh, <coughs> the Member of Parliament for Stoke on Trent Central, is planned for the Park Hall site. Incredibly, this Park Hall site is currently occupied by the hulking mass of an old gasometer. It's on a busy traffic island and opposite a main bus garage with buses pulling on and off onto a busy main road. So much for safe routes to school. So if you're a pupil from the mere north or western coiny areas of my constituency, you now have a choice. You can travel to Sandon High, very good school, but a journey which involves crossing the very busy A50. That's a road which has, on average, one serious accident every week just in the stretch in my constituency. Or you can journey some miles to the Park Hall site with all the problems I've just mentioned. And why? Well, because the local Longton High, with which head teacher Jan Weber has successfully brought out of special measures, in a, indeed to be a nationally recognised specialist arts college, is reckoned to be surplus to requirements. Or if you're a pupil from Sanford Hill or Mere Hay areas, you'll have to travel along the narrow, already very congested, dangerous anchor road where there is a narrow pavement on one side and indeed no pavement at all on the other, back to the aforementioned Park Hall site. Alternatively, a pupil could travel through Longton Town Centre, avoiding all the traffic around there, cross the A50, as I've already mentioned, and down into Blurton to their new school. If you're a pupil down in Trentham or in Hanford, you'll ne now need to travel along the Longton Road, over the West Coast Mainline Railway track, over a canal, and onto the bottom of the Trentham Lakes Industrial Park, 
There, no doubt, they'll have to compete with the lorries who use the Stanley Matthews Way to access the major distribution warehouses on that site. Now, Mrs Anderson, someone listening to this debate may, may by now be wondering how it was that the Council chose these sites. Well, that's a good question, especially considering that Serco and the Council didn't even bother visiting at least half the schools before announcing their plans. The next thought might be why reduce from five non-faith schools in Stoke South to just two? Well, the Council has projected that there will be around 12,000 pupils in the city by 2014. So that's an easy equation, isn't it? 12,000 divided by, oh, let's say, 1,000 pupils, that makes 12 schools. Mr. Anderson, this is supposed to be planning our children's future, not a primary school maths lesson. So let's unpick those figures a little, shall we? According to the BSF guidance for pupil place planning, the Council should be using the number of pupils that will be forecast 10 years into the future. So let's look at how many one-year-olds there are in the city, because they'll, of course, be the pupils looking to go to high school at age 11. According to Stokes Primary Care Trust, there were 3,181 one-year-olds in the city last year. And in the first nine months of this year, there were 2,852 babies delivered. So that suggests around 3,000 children each year. So for a five-year high school, we would have 15,000 children aged from 11 to 16. <clears throat> According to the House of Commons Library, the Office of National Statistics shows that this year there are around 14,100 young children under five in the city. Now, they do project that in 2018, that's 10 years' time, not 2014, that it might be perhaps down to as far as 13,000. So we know we're looking at somewhere between 13,000 and 15,000 children needing a high school place in Stoke-on-Trent in 10 years' time. But hang on, the council is looking at 2014, that's not 10 years' time, and so doesn't take account of the increased birth rate in Stoke-on-Trent, something that the council even admits themselves has risen noticeably. The BSF funding guidance for pupil planning goes on to say that where roles will have fallen at the 10-year projection point, but a BSF school opens in advance of that, BSF will fund the extra places up to 5%. So even if we take the lowest figure of 13,000 at 5%, that still gives us 13,650 pupils, comparing that to current pupil numbers of around 15,000. So the council, in their gross simplicity, said, OK, let's call it 13 schools, without any rational thought. So we should have places for at least 13,650 pupils, or more likely 15,000 pupils, based on current birth rates. Now let's turn our attention to the other part of the Mickey Mouse equation, 1,000 pupil schools. Well, where does that magic number come from? Well, put bluntly, it's a figure come up with simply to maximise the funds available to an individual school without any regard to the effect on pupil wellbeing and the challenges faced by my city. It also ignores collaborative working, which again, even the Council have suggested they want to do with their so-called Travel to Learn partnerships. <coughs> As a pupil in an intake of around 250, you can never be an individual, but an element of a teeming mass. So much for every child matters. So again, the Council has ignored government guidance that local authorities use local needs in how they model proje projects. All the way along, Serco and the Council have said this programme is not about buildings, but about improving education. But all their attention so far has been on buildings. All we have heard from them is closure, closure, closure. Now let me at this point look more closely at Serco. This is a company that says on its website that they design innovative solutions. Really? Serco told parents of pupils at Longton High that to get to children to activities outside of the normal school day, they'll provide taxis or buses. That's innovative. Again, Serco states, <coughs> and I quote, our vision is to deliver shared success by understanding the needs and challenges faced by every school, teacher, learner and parent. So why is it that Serco have run a programme of misinformation, division and information control? Why have Serco singularly failed to engage with schools, parents, teachers in anything other than an arrogant, we know what's best for you approach? Well, perhaps it's because Serco also run everything from the Atomic Weapons Authority to the Woolwich Ferry. Again, Serco say on their website, you might not have heard of them in the context of BSF. Because, as they put it, they just get on and do it. Well, those of us in Stoke South know that's true because they do just get on and do it. They certainly haven't listened to the needs and wishes of local people. Now, there's no dispute that in Stoke South, like the rest of the city, we need to improve the way our young people are educated. No one has ever disputed that fact. But let's not pretend that it is all a complete disaster at the moment. Longton High, as I've mentioned, had been a failing school. But instead of being helped, it has been cut down at every opportunity. Now, it's been said that DCF's role, through National Challenge, is to support the efforts of schools that are improving from a low starting point. Now, who said that? Oh, yes, it was my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Children's Schools and Families. 
Jan Webber and her team at Longton High have done a fabulous job to improve the school, but that's been